Good morning, and welcome to Monday Morning Mocha. I'm your host, Dr. Gregory Todd, and today I am joined by the absolutely amazing Carol Campbell. So good to see you today. Um, so, Carol, uh, before we get started, um, why don't you talk to us a little bit about CIC? CIC. Well, Greg, thank you very much for absolutely. inviting me, and nice to see you again. So, Chicopee Industrial Contractors, also known as CIC, mm -hmm. uh, is an industrial um, contracting company that uh, focuses mainly in rigging. Okay. And when I say rigging, it is the installation of a, um, a piece of production machinery. It can be the installation of a roof unit. It is actually lifting and moving um, anything that's heavy. Mm -hmm. We work primarily in the manufacturing sector, um, do some work with municipalities, uh, some okay. of the schools, uh, colleges, and locally. So we've been in business um, over 30 years, 31 years. Mm -hmm. So I started the business in 1992. And over COVID, um, well, actually last month, my last original employee retired. So we had oh, a wow. lot of uh, um, longevity with our workforce. Very nice. So, Says a lot about your leadership, too. Well, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so before we get started, um, you and I talked a little bit about this off mic but you started an improv class? Well, I did. So I, um, 31 years, 32 years of uh, uh, being with CIC has been a challenge. Mm -hmm. um, and now as I am working uh, to move people up within the organization mm -hmm, to take a little mm -hmm. more pressure off of me so I can play a little more, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I'm also kind of recreating myself a little and, and trying to... Um, either brand myself uh, with CIC and a little without CIC. Yeah, yeah. So the improv course was um, something that I read about uh, that I originally thought I'd be good at because mm -hmm. I think I have a pretty good sense of humor. Right, um, right. So it's, it's comedy or just? Oh, well, it's improv. Okay, okay. So, okay. Um, but uh, it's really not just um how funny you are. So improv is um, getting into the moment. Right, um, right. And it's not, um, it's not controlling the situation. It's not controlling um, the conversation, uh, which is kind of not who I am. Yeah, so yeah, for yeah. me, it was very much stepping out of my comfort zone. Yeah, yeah. Um, very much trusting um, uh, that, that I could work with the uh, person that I was on stage with or on the floor because I haven't made it to the stage yet mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, with a little bit of wit. Right. Um, so it is, it's, it's been fun. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it's been a little scary, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but I'll be signing up for improv too. Mm -hmm. And uh, not quite sure you'll see me on stage, but it is, uh, uh, I, I recommend it for a lot of reasons. Yeah. So I don't really love, I know people find this hard to believe, I don't really love speaking publicly, right, um, right. but um, I, I think I was a little, uh, I'm a little better than some other people in our yeah. class that couldn't get up and speak. Sure. Public. And to have watched them evolve just through an eight or nine week yeah. course was was very interesting. So. Yeah, as a, as a pseudo theater major in college, that was probably one of my favorite classes, mm -hmm. you know, to be able to think on your feet. This is amazing, you know, in, in any situation. You know, so yeah, that's super exciting. Super exciting. We did a workshop. I did a workshop over the summer and it was pretty interesting. There were four of us and we had to be a, sh we had to be a shoe. Mm -hmm. You would have loved this. Oh, great. So <laughs> I actually was a patent leather high heel. Okay. But sitting next to me was a Birkenstock. Okay. So, okay. Was, and, and then there was a slipper and then there was a, um, um, uh, a, a Nike shoe, but very, it was, it's very comical, comical. I have to Sounds say fantastic. the wit was, was, and then you introduce socks into the whole thing. So I, uh, I love I, that had fun. Yeah. yeah had fun. So I'm enjoying it. So you and I, um, kind of know each other through mentoring and leadership. Right. And <clears throat> I know when we started talking, you as a prominent leader, I'd say, in the community, yeah, um, definitely. Um, you know, I, I I really appreciate, you know, having you on the show, first of all, but, you know, I wanted to explore with you this idea of, of female leadership, 
you know, and, and what that looks like in their community now um, and, and how you see that evolving or what you see is being needed. So I, I guess one of my first questions looks at within your industry and your complexion, uh, being a leader and a female leader, how, how does that work or does it? Or So it, it must work. I've been here 31 years. Yeah, I, yeah. I will say 31 years ago, there were only two or three of us. Right, um, right. There are many more women now in the manufacturing sector right, that, are, right, that right. are leading organizations. I was raised by uh, two strong, pretty strong parents who mm -hmm. never told me I couldn't do something. So right. really, when I decided to do this, being a woman was not really part of the equation for me. Right. It was, right. was I skilled to do it? And I will say, one of my first customers that I dealt with, um, we had taken the job from somebody else, a male uh, a, a company led by a male, and I said, you know, I would be leading the project. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, granted, this is 31 years ago, so yeah. wording my, maybe isn't appropriate in 2023, but he says, I really so don't 90s. care, you know, male or female, if you can do the job, that's really all I care about. Right, right. And that has been my focus, okay. to make sure that I can provide the best service um, to our customers. And one of our taglines is to exceed your expectations. Uh, but that's not a tagline. That is a belief of absolutely. Mine. So yeah. I, um, so I can't say I have found a lot of issues around being a woman mm -hmm. uh, in business or in in the in a very male dominated uh, industry. Except that every time I talk to somebody, they're like, "Well, you're a woman in a male business." Interesting. So um, I have, and I think I'm going to jump ahead. Sure, you know, sure. I told you that yeah. I. Uh, so I. I worked in the beginning part of my career um, to make sure that I could grow the business mm -hmm. and 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 I you know wore the pinstripe suits and made sure that I could blend. Mm -hmm. I tried to mm -hmm. blend. I mm -hmm. didn't try to stick out. And when my youngest, my oldest granddaughter was born, and I held her in my arms for the first time mm -hmm. and told her she could be anything that she wanted to be, mm -hmm. a ballerina or CEO, or a CEO mm -hmm. of a rigging company, mm -hmm. I decided in that moment that I needed to kind of change my focus a little bit Interesting. and I needed to go out and make sure that all women had the opportunity, whether it was their own business or working for someone else. Right. And that is when I became very active in the women's um, organizations and yes. the community uh, and feel that by example, showing by example of what uh, my granddaughters can do. Absolutely. And if they choose to be a stay-at-home mom, then choose to be a stay-at-home mom. It's yeah. a very respectable. Um, so so as a mentor then, like how do you, how would you, how have you prepared your mentees for, for those situations? So um, I've... <laughs> I give advice whether anybody wants it or not. So right. that makes mentoring very easy, right. very right. easy. Right. And with the young women um, that have, I've found have started off, and then one in particular who, who um, I've worked with for many years, she was very passive. And one of her favorite phrases was, I'm sorry, whether right. she was sorry or not, whether she, not whether she's sorry, right. whether she made the mistake or not. Yeah. yeah. So really just trying to work with, young women to let them know that they have a voice right, and right. that they don't have to know everything all the time. Yeah, they yeah. can ask questions um, and to not listen to, and now I'm going to get back to the improv again, <laughs> to that inner critic yes. that sometimes tells you that you can't do what you know you can do. Yes, and yes. To, to, to help them it's have a very the powerful conversation. statement. No, yeah. No. Well, uh, Thank you, improv. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I named my inner critic, but and we all have that. And the mm -hmm. imposter syndrome. And mm -hmm. so I've been very honest with women that I've worked with, and especially young women, um, that it just doesn't happen. Yeah. But even when it does happen, we have been trained to for the, it's the whole imposter syndrome. Yeah. So that we've been trained to not really believe that we have achieved what we've achieved right and right so it's uh, I, 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 it's been that has been a big part of my um mentoring advising whatever with with young women to just understand what you're doing right listen to your voice and 
don't think that you can't do it. And I will say the best learning I've ever done are from mistakes I've made. Absolutely. Sometimes I refer to them because it can be expensive, just as another college education. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if I do tell not my my female and my male mm -hmm. um, people that I work with that um, failing or making a mistake is not the it can be solved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not learning from that mistake is 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 where the um, where the growth stops. Absolutely. Absolutely. So how hard has it been uh, in your industry to um, promote female leadership, especially in an environment where it's so male dominated? Well, it took me many years. Yeah. It took me, um, I think, maybe 26, 27 years before I had a full female team. Right, right. And uh, one of the proudest things I've done to be able to say that I have women sitting in the the, the seats of mm -hmm. decision-making seats mm -hmm. at, at, at Chickabee Industrial. Mm -hmm. It has been hard um, in the field because uh, uh, I haven't been able to find the right um, way to attract um, females that want to do some of the physical work right. that needs to be done. Right, right. I've been very fortunate in my hiring um, of recent, and but my hiring philosophy has always been hire by who they are as a person, their core values, right. their um, uh, their belief system, and then I can train. Right. And so, as a company, we have invested. Um, a lot of um, our resources and mm -hmm. money into training, 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 technical skills mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. soft skills. Yeah, so yeah. for over 30 years, we have brought the soft skills in as much as the um, technical skills. Absolutely. So good balance. Yeah. Good balance. Absolutely. Good balance. So do you think it's like um, an issue of gender role expectation? You know what I mean? Like, so women coming into a, a primarily male dominated, and I'm lo not looking just at, you know, CIC's industry, but others, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, the, the, it's, it's very hard to find females in specific areas, you know, in certain industries. Do you think that's conditioning or do you think it's availability or what, what would you say in your experience? <laughs> Well, I'm not really sure I have the answer to that. If I did, mm. I would be, you know, yeah, wow. the, best, <laughs> the best placement, uh, labor placements. I, I, I feel that, um, or my, my, what I have found is that if women, well, let's see, how, how do I go back to this? One of the questions I asked, I have a new employee that's been with me nine months, okay. a female. Yeah. Um, and so I said to her, I said, I'm going to ask you a very loaded question, and I want you to be very honest mm. with me. So I told her what I was doing tonight, and I said, do you feel we're gender neutral here? Mm. How do you feel mm. as the, the – she's young, mm -hmm. she's, she's in her 30s, uh, female. She works um, – she's our estimator, our mm -hmm. project manager, mm -hmm. and she works in the field. And she, without hesitation – said, I think the males treat me the same way they treat each other. Mm. And um, so she felt very gender, you know, that yeah. we were as gender neutral as you, as, as you can be. Mm. I attribute a lot of that to um, the fact that I've always myself been kind of gender neutral in right. my role. Right. So it's never, I have never, we are a woman-owned business. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. We are certified. We have made such a small amount of money on that certification. Yeah, it yeah. just is not, uh, that's not how people hire us. Yeah, they yeah. hire us on what we can do. Yeah. So that, um, uh, yeah. So I think it also says a lot about how, you, how your culture supports that male perspective as well. Because in the, in the push for gender equality, gender equity, um, you know, I think that allows for a lot of growth in your team as well. Like, how do you think that you've been able, been able to accomplish that? Because that's not a small feat. You know, so I least. would say um, 30 years ago, yeah. was so uh, we didn't have unconscious biases. We had yeah. regular, just biases. Yeah. I have had many people that um, just couldn't work for a woman. And yeah. they would, you know, I, you can't tell me what to do. Yeah. Well, can. <laughs> 
what I am have worked with my team now on is really trying to uncover some of the unconscious biases yeah. that they have. Yeah, yeah. Um, not through the formal testing, um, but but through lots of conversations. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. Certainly, uh, we're an open enough um, company that people feel the males and females mm-hmm. uh, feel comfortable to ask me political questions mm-hmm. and to mm-hmm. ask me questions on um, women, women's issues, issues yeah. uh, uh, a specific one, um, which I thought was very interesting was the little mermaid, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. change yes. the words yes. to the little mermaid. Yeah. So one of uh, my employees who has daughters mm-hmm. and has watched the little mermaid multiple times, male employee, male employee, yeah. yeah said, I don't understand why they're changing the song. I right. just don't understand why they're changing. And so I kind of had to put my arms up in the air and say, so you know what? <laughs> I don't even know the song. Right, right. I don't have, uh, uh, I didn't watch it with my granddaughters. Yeah. So I went and I got the song and I printed it out and we sat down and we talked about it. Interesting. And I, 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 I can't quote this exactly, but it's hmm. like, kiss the girl you know she wants it. And mm. that's that's not the exact word, but right, it right, was right. really like uh, she's saying no, but it means yes. Right, right, right. And right. so their response was, but that's not the way it is in the movie. Right. And so they don't need to change the words. And I said, but it's not just listened to in a movie. Yeah. And the fact of this double, you know, well, she she she's she she says no, but she really, right. you know. And so it was a good conversation and and um uh I think opened up his eyes a little bit yeah. and his understanding yeah, yeah. Um, and 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 mine yeah. of of a of a perspective of a dad that has watched this show with his little girls yeah. and is very I mean this he's a very protective father yeah. of his of his of his of his girls but and we do talk a lot about that I don't talk a lot about politics but yeah. even I'll even allow people to talk about politics as long as it can be. Yeah. Um, Welcoming, calm, yeah. and 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 oh, able to see both sides. Yeah, I mean, on a side note, um, I actually saw the Little Mermaid, the new um, one, and it would be very easy to go down the rabbit hole about you know the the messaging and the the evolution of the images, you know, mm-hmm. um, and I think sometimes, and I'm saying that to say, I think our society community is, you know, is evolving, you know, and we choose to get on that train or not. So mm-hmm. to speak. Mm-hmm. So, and, and, mm-hmm. and again, you know. Well, I saw Barbie the other night. I've heard good things about Barbie. So, yes. And I will tell you, in all honesty, when I first saw it advertised a year ago, yeah. I was like, yeah, so that's not on my list. Right, right. You know, everything that I had a Barbie when I was young, but really everything that I thought Barbie <clears throat> represented was right. against everything that right. I believe in. Yeah. Um, it was whimsical and, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm, it was, mm-hmm. you know, Barbie land where, you know, you nothing when you drink out of water, no water comes on you or anything and everything is perfect. And um, but uh, the messaging was um, there is very good. Uh, uh, and it's oversold. Yeah. Um, all the other movies yeah. out there. Yeah, I so. heard it's amazing. I mean, we're not plugging Barbie. But no, I'm not plugging Barbie. I'm just saying <laughs> but that as a, well, <laughs> but as a feminist, you know, would I have ever thought that I would go to see a Barbie movie? Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I mean, I, I've talked about going to see it as well. So, um, yeah. So one of the thoughts that I had, and, and again, you and I talked about this off mic, um, you know, this, this um, focus on um, women leadership, um, and again, I'm not trying to use verbiage that uh, um, minimizes, but you know, with this with this new focus, um, how do you think, if you have an opinion, how do you think that the the whole uh, move towards DEI and diversity, equity, inclusion has added to it, or taken away from it, or nothing? It could could be nothing, you know. So my. And we're small, so um, uh, we don't have a formal training program yeah. in, in, in DEI. But yeah. I'm, I sit on many boards, and I've attended many training sessions yeah. on DEI. One of the um, important but yet not discussed um, uh, outcomes of it is the unconscious bias. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah. And I remember the first time that I was 
on it and it was on screen because mm -hmm. everything, you know, it was over COVID. And um, there was another board member on there that I hadn't met. And he saw a woman up there mm -hmm. and he saw my company. And the first thing he did, and he admitted this, the mm -hmm. first thing he did was Google to see, you know, what I, what, what why I was sitting in on this upper um, right. executive. Interesting. Uh, uh, so, which opened up the conversation for yeah. his unconscious bias. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and not necessarily a bad thing, I'm gathering, but just interested. Well, interesting. And, and if you know it, I think if you understand it, then you can work, yeah. work work with it yeah. um you know i've never had the opportunity to sit and hire a whole executive team yeah uh, but uh, um, i have sat on many search committee mm -hmm. um, uh, and and have always made wanted to assure that there was diversity among right the the applicants mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so uh so i yeah i, I think that's yeah. I'm not sure where else I can go with that. No, absolutely. Um, so, and I guess this will kind of wrap us up, but, you know, we're talking about mentoring and leadership and stuff as a, as a mentor who has mentored me. Um, what would you tell to aspiring mentors about, you know, in, in this current day and age, in the complexion of our community, like how can they, how can they be effective mentors to people? So I think one of the first things I even told you when, mm -hmm. when we started talking is the mentor-mentee relationship is, a, it's a two-way, mm. uh, it, it's it's very much a two-way street. It's not that there's the mentor knows all and, mm -hmm. you know, will guide you wherever you want to go. Uh, the, I think that the, men, the, the, the it's the exchange between the mentor and the mentee, and both are always learning. Mm -hmm. Some mm -hmm. may mm -hmm. have an advantage in one area, um, others not. I think that being a mentor, tour um to anyone that wants to to be able to learn or benefit from some of your experiences mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i don't think it always means that they're going to go down the same path that you have gone mm -hmm. or that those experiences will uh have the same outcome right. as they did on yours but i but as a mentor myself, I've always brought my personal into it mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. I, that's how I lead and, and who I am. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's how I was, how I became who I am today. So it's my experiences that have brought me there. Absolutely. So, so I think it's on your side, if I may interject, it's having that bravery to share your experiences. Right. right. You know, yeah. and, and, and as the mentee, you know, being able to, recognize how they fit in a context or it becomes tool, tools in the toolbox. Toolbox, right? yeah. yeah exactly. And I think it's a trust on both sides mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, because the usually the, you know, mentee thinks that they have to, so I'm, a mentor is not an executive coach. I've right. worked with executive coaches and I would never put my, you know, I, I am not skilled Absolutely. as an executive yeah, coach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, um, but I'm, I, I feel that my, my experiences can, can yeah. help someone. And then I want to learn and, as I say, I want to give a hand up and help yeah, women yeah, yeah. now. And how can I do that if I don't know what they're experiencing now? Because it's a very different environment now than it was when I first started. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and it's funny because when um, you and I first talked about you coming to join us today, um, you know, I, like anybody, I did my research and stuff like that. So the next time you're invited, um, next time you come on, I definitely want to talk about... Um, why people would refer to you as Z. Carol Campbell. So we're going to talk about that. <laughs> uh, so, okay, you've been talking to a friend of mine. <laughs> yeah. It was quite an honor, I will say. Good. It Fantastic. was, uh, I felt very good about it. It was a customer. Fantastic. But, uh, well, thank you so much for joining us today. This is amazing. And it's always a pleasure to see you and to um, get your wisdom. It's oh, fantastic. Well, thank you. It's nice to be here. Thank Excellent. you for including me. Yes. And uh, uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. And um, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Until next time. <laughs>